getting ready for our Class 1A championship game. Anawan and Carrollton with the head coach of the Bravettes, Jason Bergowitz. You've been here before in this in this building and on this day, but it's a different game. Your kids are well aware of what they're up against today. What does that mean to you guys? Um, you know, they've been waiting for it since the end of last season. Uh, they've got themselves prepared. Hopefully we can come out, play nice and relax, not look, uh, you know, not, not focus on that it's the last game of the year, especially being that we have a lot of seniors and uh, just play basketball. We talked about let's pretend that we have practice on Monday and let's go out and play another game. How difficult is it to kind of wipe the slate clean from yesterday after playing so well and, and understanding you may not play that well today? Yeah, we talked about that. We said yesterday's over, you know, we need to move on and we need to execute in this one. Um, you know, we feel good about yesterday, but it, it means nothing. It, it has no bearing on this game, so we, we got to come out and do it again. Talk about Selena and her ankle has been an issue the last couple of years, so to speak. Last year she had a hard time here. This year she's much healthier. How important is it to get her in the flow offensively right away? It's very important. You know, we'll go down to her. She's been our number one option, um, you know, since she's come into the program. Uh, the big thing is she just makes it so much tougher in our press. Uh, she's able to fly around this year. Um, where last year we were just kind of trying to slow up teams rather than get our steals. So uh, when she's able to fly around, we're, we have uh, much more pressure we can bring to the game. As the number one team going up against the team, like the David and Goliath scenario, so to speak, they have no fear out there. Do you talk about that with your team, about what they're up against? They're a veteran team. Uh, they've been focused through this whole run. Um, you know, they, they mentally are able to prepare themselves. We do a lot of that during the season. We've done a lot of that the last two years with how you prepare for big games. So um, they're no stranger to it, and I think they'll have themselves ready to go. From a personal standpoint, you're a head coach in a championship game. What's that feel like for you? Um, it's awesome. You know, um, I've, been, I've been going to high school games since my parents were bringing me at five years old. Uh, I went 32 and one with a team and we lost the state championship game and I've been wanting one ever since I've been going to watch games. Um, so, you know, this is our opportunity. This is one of my opportunities. Jason Burko is the head coach of Anilon. Good luck, all right? Thanks. All right, and we'll talk with uh, the other head coach of Carrollton and the Lady Hawks, Brian Madsen. That's coming up next here on the IHSA Television Network. Getting set for Class 1A in the state championship next. Number one against unranked, it's Anawan and Carrollton. Matt Rodewald back here at Redbird Arena with Brian Madsen. And we know that Patsy Coonrod is here today after the accident this past Saturday. The emotions are running high. How do you assess your team at this point? Um, a lot different than yesterday. I think uh, yesterday we came in nervous. Um, but in the locker room, it's a wholly, totally different climate inside there. Um, our girls seem a lot more relaxed today. so. Hopefully, um, start the game, we come out prepared and just come out and do our thing. Have they been able to strike the balance of trying to win it for her and just doing what they have to do on the floor? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, obviously all the girls are pretty close to Patsy, so they, they want to do it for her. Um, but we're all competitors. They're going to do, um, they're going to play their best. They're going to do it for the team. Um, so Patsy is a major part of it, but um, they're just doing it for the team in general. This is going to face a lot of pressure today in the Bravettes and the way they play defense after they forced as many turnovers as they did yesterday. What do you do to go up against it? Or you just try and stay out of the traps as best you can? Yeah, I told the girls, um, we just got to be calm. We got to be calm because we know uh, it'll probably be one of the, the hardest pressure that we've seen all season. Um, I just told the girls, we got to be patient. We got 10 seconds to give the cross. Just take our time. If we see an opening, don't think twice about it. Just go with it. And, don't look back because they're, they're quick. They're going to become coming from behind, and try to steal it. So the biggest thing is we just need to stay cool. From a personal standpoint, it's your first year in Carrollton. You're in a state championship game. Do you understand maybe what it means to the community and what it means to you? Not really. Um, I kind of wished that I would get this you know, later in my career so I could actually enjoy it a little more with the girls. Because right now my emotions are just been a whirlwind last couple weeks. So. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for the girls to be here, and I know the community is backing me, whatever I do, so um, I'm glad to be here. All right, Coach, good luck. Brian Madsen, the head coach of Carroll, and we're going to let him walk across here as he gets set for the captain's meeting, which means we have basketball coming up. Anawan and Carrollton, our Class 1A championship game is up next here on the IHSA Television Network. David, Goliath, they're both here as we get set for a ch Class 1A championship battle that could be a classic. Anawan and the Bravettes with unfinished business and the Lady Hawks of Carrollton battling next for the 1A title. 
And welcome into Redbird Arena. Matt Rodewald with you as we get set for a state champion. We're going to crown number one, the first of eight champions that we will crown over the course of the next month. And this should be a good game for you. Let's see how they got here, though, as we take a look at the brackets and show you in Class 1A. Carrollton getting past Astoria in the super sectional and then the upset over number two, Central A&M. Identical scores to get to this point. As for Anawan taking care of Cisna Park. And then in the semis yesterday, running away from Eastland and hiding very early in that one. And Anawan and their pressure will be up against Carrollton and the Lady Hawks, who's doing it for Patsy. Patsy Strong is the theme here. She's here today. She was involved in a car accident. The leading scorer, not able to play because of her injuries sustained in that on Saturday. She's gonna be okay, but she may never play basketball ever again. She's the only senior on this roster, and she's here today, and she surprised them in the locker room, talked to the team, and the team feels just a little bit different and a little more relaxed, and you see her on the bench trying to be as comfortable as she can be. But everybody's all smiles on the Carrollton sideline as they get set for what they think could be a magical day to win a state championship. And for Patsy, the understanding for her is she won't have the opportunity that her brother had, Joey, to play in the state championship game. Joey actually missed a layup that would have won a state champion two years ago. She hopes her teammates today can do it for her and for him, what he missed out on two years ago. Let's get the call of this one as we learn a little more about Anna Juan and Carrollton. Send it over to Lee Hall and Kelly Burke. Guys. All right, Matt Rodewald, thank you very much. Well, Patsy Coonrod was watching yesterday. I went over and uh, asked her if she had heard us talking to her. And she felt the need to be here today and a uh, pretty courageous effort by her to get here. It's not around the corner from Carrollton. And uh, if she was an inspiration from uh, from a distance, you can only imagine what she'll do for this team by them seeing her here today. Oh, I would imagine that they're going to come out and play some inspired basketball right out of the gate. I mean, just such an emotional thing, too, just just looking at her and, you know, has the neck brace on and, you know, clearly, like you mentioned, just a, a tragic situation that she's had to endure and, and this team. But, I mean, they were a resilient group yesterday, a, a bunch of fighters. And, you know, I, I know they come in unranked against the top ranked team in the state, but, you know, they're they're playing for an emotional purpose at this point. And, and that emotional purpose is Patsy Coonrod, their lone senior of this Lady Hawks team. All right, well, let's hear what Brian Madsen had to say about uh, how his team has handled losing its top scorer and rebounder, Patsy Coonrod. Um, the team's responded more than I could you know, ever imagine. Um, like Rachel said earlier, Patsy has been um, kind of our our backbone this season. Um, so when we got the text, uh, got the call on Sunday morning, um, our girls were pretty emotional. Um, they went all day Sunday not hearing from her. Um, we had a walk through Sunday evening. Um, didn't get a whole lot accomplished uh, because they were so emotional and um, you know, tied to, to Patsy. Um, but after the practice, um, they finally got a chance to talk to her. Um, a couple of them went over and saw her. And I think that was a great uh, stepping stone for us. The girls were able to move on past that. Um, they got a little closure out of the situation. They just realized that she'll be okay. And um, so come Monday, we were, we were ready to go. And um, the atmosphere was definitely changed. And um, the girls responded. Uh, they played great. Uh, they're very proud of the way this has been an Monday. inspiration all week, but will it be enough to win a state title? We'll find out next. Now, fans, before our guest soloist sings our national anthem, we ask you to remember and honor the men and women of the United States Armed Forces serving throughout the world with a moment of silence. Thank you. And now we ask you to join our guest soloist. Cameron Cornell, a senior student at Judah Christian High School, in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming 
And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wear the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now, fans, let's meet the starting lineup for the Class 1A Championship of the 2014 IHSA Girls State Basketball Tournament. First from Anawana, senior number 11, Maddie Jackson. From Carrollton, a junior, number three, Maddie Struble. From Anawan, a senior, number 22, Megan Bowes. For Carrollton, a junior, number 21, Mackenzie Rule. For Anawan, a senior, number 23, Sierra Davis. For Carrollton, a junior, number 22, Jessica Lake. From Anawan, a sophomore, number 33, Morgan Van Hefty. From Carrollton, a junior, number 25, Madison Mountain. From Anawan, a senior, number 35, Selena Van Hefty. And from Carrollton, a junior, number 34, Rachel Williams. We are ready for championship basketball. Carrollton and Anawan for the 1A state title right after this. Anawan and Carrollton for the state championship. Kelly Burke, what's your keys for number one Anawan? Well, of course, one of them has to be their suffocating defense. They just harass you so much in the backcourt of that trap, forcing you to pick up the dribble and panic and can score in a matter of seconds. Yesterday, forced 47 turnovers against Eastland. That led to 44 Anawan points. They had 35 steals lead in 32 minutes of basketball. It's more than a steal a minute. And of course, this, this is a team in Anawan, too, that needs to win each quarter. They, Simply have 32 minutes left of basketball to achieve the goal that they set 365 days ago to win a state title. Well, they get their first turnover and commit their first turnover. The Hawks unranked. Lady Hawks almost turn it over again. Selena Van Hefty takes it away. Here come the ladies in maroon. Sierra Davis. Morgan Van Hefty had a tough shooting day yesterday. Maddie Jackson, the rebound, and now a jump ball. And it'll stay with Anawan. Madison Mountain doing a great job there of getting her hands on the basketball. Inside, Selena Van Hefty drives around the defender, Rachel Williams, and she'll go to the line. And I love the sign in the pregame, bring down this arena, go Selena. <laughs> You and know, she did right away. You know, and, and Williams called for the foul there early. You know, she's going to be one of the keys today for Carrollton. She's going to have to stay out of foul trouble. She played just 16 minutes yesterday, scored six points because she was in foul trouble most of the game. But she's been dominant, you know, the second half of the season for the Lady Hawks. Uh, and her defense today on Van Hefty will, of course, be key. I'm interested to see how that matchup plays out. The unanimous All-Stater splits the free throws, and Anna Wan's on the board. Third at State a year ago. Here's keys for Carrollton as we have a foul right in front of our broadcast position. Of course, Matt, you know, talked about it before the game. Patsy Strong, you know, nothing replaces, of course, 
being able to play in the state tournament, but you know, what a feeling to have her here, you know, at least come up for the day, be a part of this team and really inspire them out there. You know, no doubt that they will, you know, are still emotional about it, but will be playing an inspired brand of basketball, thinking of her the whole time. And of course, a possession game. They can't let the Bravettes dictate the pace of the game. They have to take advantage, like you just saw there, of every possession. Rachel Williams puts her second rebound back, and it's a two to one lead for the Lady Hawks, 25 and six. Whistle against the Lady Hawks, and Jason Berkowitz goes to his bench and sends in Paige Randall for Sierra Davis. Foul was on Mackenzie Rule. And now Hannah Wan goes to work in the half court. And stolen away, but Morgan Van Hefty gets it right back. Jessica Lake almost came up with the steal there. Megan Foes for three. And this will be a foul on Anawan's Maddie Jackson over the back. And we talked about that, the press, here it comes. They forced 47 turnovers yesterday against Eastland. And the key to this press, Megan Foes, nine steals yesterday. Got a hand on that one. Madison Mountain gets bumped and loses it out of bounds. It'll be Anna Juan Ball. Selena Van Hefty dribbles it off a Carrollton player's foot, gets it back, and scores. She great, averages 20 a game. Great recovery there by her. Now Maddie Jackson quickly picks up her second personal on the backboard. Number 11, Maddie Jackson, her second personal, 13. You know, the keys to breaking this press, you got to get rid of the ball quick. You can't pick up your dribble. We saw that yesterday against Eastland. Hand on the ball there. Rule gets it. She gives it ahead to Rachel Williams. And a foul on Selena Van Hefty as Williams was quick to get down the floor. Van Hefty playing catch up, whistled for the foul. So that's exactly what Williams oh, needs to do. Williams just go Hefty right at person. Selena Van Hefty, try and get her in foul trouble. Rachel Williams, free throw line shooting. Williams just a 53% free thrower. She's struggled with foul trouble in the postseason. Only six points in 16 minutes yesterday. Sierra Davis back in for Anawan. But previously to that point, she'd been the leading scorer in 11 of their last 14 games. In and out. She had foul trouble in the super sectional as well, only uh, limited playing time, I should say. South Fulton. Two fouls in the first two minutes and really didn't figure too much in the scoring. Now Carrollton with the takeaway. Maddie Struble, the 5'9 junior with the steal. She's really picked up her game with Patsy Kunrod's injury. 19 points, 17 rebounds yesterday. Had, had nearly half of her club's rebounds. Steal on defense. Morgan Van Hefty shot no good. And that's where Anawan's defense, you talk about the press all day, but in the half court, their defense, it doesn't slow down any. They're still relentless and in the passing lanes all day. If you make a mistake, they capitalize on it. Inside, Williams over Davis. Rachel Williams with all five points for Carrollton. You know, and as frantic as Anawan is defensively, they just they need to be patient offensively in their half court set. Sierra Davis gets it. She makes a move and rolls it over the rim. The 5'10 senior averaging 21 points a game in the postseason. She's really picked it up. We talked about foes, how key she is on that trap press. Morgan Van Hefty fouled. Carrollton fouls on 21, McKenzie Rule. Second personal, third team. 
Second personal on McKenzie Rule. She'll go to the bench and we'll go to a break. Much better start for Carrollton today. They are even with number one Anawan. Well, Selena Van Hefty is the leading scorer, leading rebounder, but another key player for Anawan is number 22, Megan Fox. Well, she's what makes their defense go nine steals in yesterday's semifinal win and, and domination really by Anawan. You know, she's, you know, the key of that 2-1-2 two, two trap that they run. And also this year offensively, a big reason, you know, the teams have been forced to play Selena one-on-one -on -one because she's had a big year beyond, behind the arc. Megan Foes and AP honorable mention All-Stater. Here's the three-time All-Stater. Van Hefty follows her own shot. Selena. She's got five points. It's a two-point Anawan lead. Here's the full court pressure. The count is on. And Sierra Davis comes away with a takeaway. And Anawan's length just gives teams so many problems because they, they just need to bounce past the ball on that press, and they try and go over the top and throw it. Well, that's a couple of blown opportunities for Anawan where they got the turnover and then weren't able to capitalize. They scored 44 points off turnovers yesterday. And there, that's one of those almost an unforced error. Anawan really didn't do anything, but they're in such a hurry to beat the pressure that they make a bad pass when the person's wide open. Oh, well, that's what we talked I mean, th that press, it, it makes teams panic and do things that they normally wouldn't do. A lot of times it looks like teams are uh, and hefty way too deep hit the underside of the basket stander there. Sometimes I think teams look like they've got a hand grenade and they're just trying to get rid of it before it goes off. Yeah, it just I mean it completely takes you out of everything you would normally do offensively. Here's a steal for Megan Foes. Nice sharing of the basketball, Morgan Van Hefty with the bucket. You know, the other thing I'm seeing too that Carrollton needs to do a better job is they just, they're telegraphing their passes where they're going to try and break the press. Well, we saw it yesterday, time and again against Easton. You cannot pick up your dribble in the backcourt, or you're done. Okay. Rachel Williams on the offensive glass. She averages six boards a game, and she's got all she, check that, she's got, yes, all seven Carrollton points. Well, he said she was going to be a huge factor in this game. She needs, key for her, she has to stay on the floor. But doing a nice job so far on Selena Van Hefty, too. Sierra Davis gives out of the double team. Van Hefty with it. Lady Hawks wanted a jump ball. Instead, it's a foul on Carrollton. Anna Robinson picks up the foul on the reach. Nine seven, the lead for number one. Off the miss, they come. Hannah Robinson has it taken away. Megan Foes with it. She's just a steel machine. Nice sharing of the basketball there, but. Sierra Davis couldn't finish. Sabrina Van Hefty there to follow. Ten double doubles on the year for her, and we've seen a lot of rebounds here. Oh, look at that! Great save, Lee. Hey, I'm just protecting. I'm just protecting the talent. I don't get to keep the basketball. I was a little worried they were going to be coming over the desk and landing in our lap, but. Three, I'm here for you, Parks. That's <laughs> <laughs> what you call teamwork. You're the meal ticket. Carol, We're not going to let her in. <laughs> Sierra Davis reaches in, grabs it, jump ball. You know, it's so important against Daniel. You have to protect the basketball. It's so tough to do, though. I mean, every move you, it's like yeah. about the, I mean, the police song yesterday. Every move me, you make, we'll be watching you. The, their hands are so quick, though. Madison Mountain with the miss. Four point Anawan lead. And the Carrollton fans don't like that. 
whistle against Rachel Williams. That's her second. And that's going to be what we talked about in the issue. Can she stay on the floor today? Second person, 15. And Hefty almost lost it, and now a foul. That one looks to be against Maddie Struble. And that's the thing that, that's really the thing that Selena did yesterday. She had 18 points, but I think she was, she, I think 11 of those came at the line. She's just one of those girls. I mean, she's a stat sheet, stat sheet stuffer. 18 points, nine rebounds, eight steals, four assists yesterday. And like you mentioned, so many of those points coming at the charity stripe. Sorry, 10 of 14 at the line. Can you say that three times fast? <laughs> Stat, sheet, stuff. Well, you just saw me. I just had to say it <laughs> twice because I couldn't get it out of my mouth. So. Now, 32 Taylor Miller enters the game for Anwar. Selena Van Hefty gets a break. I guess the, the point is that. She's a danger whether she scores field goals or not. Because she gets the ball inside, she's either going to score or you're probably going to have to foul her to keep her. Score. Well, it, I mean, it keeps teams honest. She just she commands so much respect inside. You either have to, if you're not going to double team her and you're going to play her straight up, you know, it, it just she can burn you. And if you are, if, you know, if you're, you are going to double team her, then one of her other weapons is open. Some ladies making their first appearance at the ball game here. 32, Taylor Miller in the ball game for Anawan along with Dominique Davis, number three. And she's whistled for the foul there. You know, we, we talked about just the games today are going to be so much more physical. You already see it with all the fouls being called. Madison Mountain will go to the line, 50% free thrower. She had 12 points, eight boards in yesterday's win over AM. Formed again at 50% yeah. at the line. Yeah. That one rattled in and out, though. Six point lead. Sierra Davis, the three off the mark. Offensive rebound, jump ball, and it will stay with Anawan. Here's Brian Madsen, his first year at Carrollton, and he's brought his unranked Lady Hawks all the way to the state championship game. Dominique Davis, the twin sister of Sierra. And did she get an assist on that? Davis, Davis to Davis. <laughs> Davis and Davis Incorporated. And it's an eight point Anawan lead. They're slowly but surely taking control of this game. And now the steal for Taylor Miller. We well, talked about the turnovers. Already forced 10 on the day, and it's not even the end of the first quarter. 30 seconds to go now, first half. Number one, Anawan. Morgan Van Hefty off the glass and no good. Almost a turnover for the Lady Hawks. It's been a while since they've scored. They've been stuck on seven for a while. Now a foul on Dominique Davis will be her second. You know, and it's not very often. I mean, like we mentioned, we're, we're already in the bonus. It's not even the end of the first quarter. Not often you see that so early in games. But it just uh, plays to the aggressive nature so far in this one. Madison Mountain back at the line. They call her Mo. And 19 in a game earlier this year. Season high against Griggsville Perry. them both 15 to 9 7.6 seconds to play first quarter got to get a shot off quick <laughs> Madison Mountain got a hand on it and disrupted that play Anna Juan unable to get a bucket there but they take a six-point lead after one quarter
Six point lead for Anawan here as we get set for our second quarter of action. And so far that press has been pretty good as Anawan breaks the huddle here. You know, Jason Berkowitz talked to him about the press and he says, I don't know why teams don't do it more often. He says his philosophy, he learned a long time ago that you let your athletes do what they do best. And that's what he does defensively. He forced 47 turnovers yesterday with that, with that uh, defensive pressure. And today so far 11 guys. All right, man. Yeah, it's pretty relentless, and it doesn't it doesn't end at half court. I think that's I think I think that's a key too is just how well they get into the, the passing lanes and challenge just about everything you do with the basketball. They're just so athletic. It's just mind boggling when you think about how much energy it requires to, to be all over the court like that. They have a double team, and then there's a third player. That's always the key is that third player who comes up and anticipates the pass out of the double team and takes it away. But they recover so well too. You know when they get out of the trap, they just they always seem to get back into position. Megan Foes, another steal for her. Bucket and one for Paige Randall. And that's the thing, Madison Mountain was trying like heck to get the ball to Jessica Lake, who was open in the corner. She just couldn't over the double team. Well, and it's one of those things, you know. You know, if, if I'm Brian Matson, I'm telling my my team, go get the basketball. You can't just sit there and wait for the pass to get there because Anna Juan's going to jump the route. Paige Randall misses the free. That's a football turn, isn't it? Jump the route. Yeah, it is a football. Multi-purpose, I'll tell you. <laughs> Emily Struble, number four, the freshman sister of Maddie, and here's another takeaway. Time it was Maddie Jackson, and then it's Megan Foes with the layup at the other end. What I would love to see is a breakdown just on how many points for the season they score off the of turnovers. Emily Struble misses the layup. She was kind of wide of the layup lane there. You like to have that good route to the basket. Anawan's up 10. Selena Van Hefty brought that ball down in the double team, and that could have very easily been a jump ball. But they get Carrollton for the foul, and Van Hefty will go to the line. Oh, Emily Struble with the personal. First personal. Well, she had a lot of ball there, but. Selena Van Hefty will go to the line. 18 points, nine boards, eight steals yesterday. A rebound and a couple of steals away from a triple double. And a 70% free throw shooter. She shot more than 215 on the year. Wow. She makes them both. She's already in double figure scoring with 11. Lake brings it across the timeline. And here comes the double team. You can't hold the ball very long. They'll find you. They'll find you when you pass it. Struble to give to Maddie Jackson, and there is a pile up underneath a bucket there. At times, this looks like a boxing match, the way girls are just falling all over the floor. Maddie Mountain gets the foul. Maddie Jackson goes to the line. State qualifier and cross country, and that serves her well in this defense to offense. Certainly. I can tell you from experience, as somebody who ran cross country in high school and, and was all state in cross country, when you have that advantage of being that in shape going into basketball season, it can only benefit your team. I can remember running suicides with my teammates, and they would say, hey, Kelly, can you dog these a little? Because you're <laughs> killing us here. You're a court ahead of us, and you're making us look bad. Coach's pet. 23-9, <laughs> Anna on the lead. Maddie Struble. Brian Madsen calls timeout. It just got 14 turnovers. There's got to be some way to break this press, but we haven't seen it yet this weekend.
Maddie Struble, what a game she had yesterday. A double double 19 and 17, and they need her to step up in this one, too. Well, the Lady Hawks, she's really been the one that they've looked to to fill the void left by Patsy Coonrod's injury. Uh, right now, she just she hasn't seen the ball very much because they haven't been able to get it across half court. They've had it. 14 turnovers already in this game, but she is going to be pivotal. You know, Rachel Williams having a good game so far, but she's in foul trouble to spend some time on the bench. Maddie Struble has to have a good game if Carrollton is going to have a chance. Well, and that's what we were talking to some of the uh, Eastland people before the game, and that was the problem yesterday with Lexis McEnbert. She only missed one shot, but they couldn't get the ball to her. They have, they're just good. They have to figure out a way to break this press. Before the break, we haven't seen the way to break. I'm not sure if there is a way to break it because Anna Juan runs it so well. But uh, you got to try to get the ball to the middle, and you just you have to get rid of it almost as soon as you get it. You, you're not going to break it by dribbling. And you can't stand still either. I tried to you know, bring take, more people to the ball too a little bit. Looked like that time. Yeah, or take a dribble or two and give it up. Anna Juan got it hand on that one will be Carrollton ball out of bounds. Four returning starters for the Lady Hawks. They changed coaches in the offseason. Brian Madsen only had two days to work with the girls in the offseason. Now we've got a reach on Anna. Then mm -hmm. they lose their leading scorer and rebounder two days before the super sectional. But here they are playing for a state championship. Well, this, this is a team that has overcome adversity throughout the season and I mean just so impressive you missed two days I mean most most teams it takes them the whole season to get adjusted to a new coach they they clearly have you know they, they can overcome adversity and are a resilient bunch Madison Mountain bounces that one in and she had 12 points eight boards yesterday good crowd on hand here from Carrollton they know all about basketball success in that part of the state, Lori Blade coached Carrollton to back-to-back -back state championships in 2001 and 2002. Both teams are in the double ball. Selena Van Hefty tries to make something happen, maybe forced one there. Anna Juan up 13. Jackson and Madison Mountain hit the deck. If I'm Carrollton, though, I'm just, you know what, I'm being super patient on offense, which is what they're known for. I'm running as much time off the clock as I can each possession and really making Anawan work for defensively. Anawan's ball. 5.16 to go here, second quarter. Trying to turn up the defensive pressure inside a little bit. Maddie Struble whistled for her second personal. Trying to defend Selena Van Hefty, and that is not uh, that's not a job anybody would really relish, I don't think. No, it's certainly a tall task. I mean, like we mentioned, you double team her, she finds an open teammate. She's really improved her interior passing this year. You play her straight up, she just she finds so many ways to burn you. She's so strong on the block. She'll play college basketball beginning next year at Southern Illinois for Cindy Stein down in Carbondale. Makes the second free throw. She's got 12. It's a 14 point lead for Anawan. Number one in the state all year. Madison Mountain fouled. Paige Randall tripped her up. And it'll be free throws for Carrollton. Madison Mountain back there. We talked a lot about a and m Central A&M and their girls who won state championship in grade school. Rachel Williams, Madison Mountain, a couple of the girls, Jessica Lake, who were on a state championship day, a game a team rather back in 09, the IESA level. So they know about big games. It's a different level, but still it's 
When you're in seventh grade, it's still the biggest game going, right? Yeah, and this is a group that's really, they've played together for a long time, so you know, they have good chemistry. And Mo gives a little smile and shrugs her shoulders after air ball on that free throw. Back right after this from Normal. This is a story that started quite some time ago. It was written with persistence and practice, an abundance of love, and an endless supply of encouragement. The plot wasn't dreamed up by an author. It was driven by a family. Country Financial is here to protect your family and make sure each chapter turns out just the way you dreamed. Grow your own way. Country Financial. Auto, home, life, business, retirement. And we are back. It's number one Anawan out in front of Carrollton by 14. Being a play-by-play -play guy, and, and it entails a lot of things. And, and maybe number one is protecting your color commentator. Look at that. Whoop, 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 whoop. You didn't know that was in the job description, did you? <laughs> maybe they'll be giving you a bonus. Well, when you're sitting next to, and don't please don't be... Uh, offended by this, but when I'm sitting next to the brains and the beauty of the operation, I got to protect you, okay? Yeah, right here, see? You, you sure know how to make a girl feel good. That's <laughs> you earned some bonus points there. Yeah, oh, well, you know. <laughs> I have daughters, so. <laughs> They've trained you well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, they have. That was my deal in baseball, too. Good glove, no bat. <laughs> Got to be worth something. Anna Robinson with the miss, and here comes Anna Juan the other way. They with a, a rare turnover, a last trip down the floor. I think that might count as a steal too, because I obviously stuck my hand right in front of you. <laughs> You would have been fine. You'd have caught it on the first. Uh, you're right. Round. I, would, I would have caught the You ball. wouldn't have had to tip it four times. <laughs> Jessica Lake picks up the foul, Sierra and Sierra Davis, Davis will go to the line. Her twin 32. sister Dominique. Hard to tell standing them apart. Right behind her. Thankfully, they have numbers on because they they look pretty similar. Three and twenty-three. Okay, that's more than a hefty, but now she's moved a little bit. She was right behind her. Makes the second free throw, and it's a 15-point Anawan lead. It was a six-point game at the quarter, but it's a 10-1 run by Anawan. So we talked about rushing the shots. That the classic example there. You know, pull pull the ball out out and set up your offense. Dominique Davis, Davis first second. Her second. Hannah, Hannah Robinson, 5'4 freshman goes to the line. 7 of 11 at the free throw line this year. She hasn't been there a lot. Guys for the rebound. 25 to 11. Here's Morgan Van Hefty. Takes it to the hole but can't get it to go. Morgan, and the Lady Hawks lose it. Morgan's so quick driving that lane. She just blows right by everybody. Morgan shot a little flat that time, but Sierra Davis is there for the offensive rebound. She'll try the three. Lady Hawks looking for their first field goal of the second quarter. Just two free throws to show for their efforts here in the second period. Maddie Struble, tough drive off the glass. Here comes Morgan Van Hefty. Right over Madison Mountain. Sierra Davis the rebound. She'll go to the line as she 
Got the rebound and it's foul. And Davis has been so good on the glass this year. Really brings Over another 25. element to Anawan's game. Sierra Davis is a free throw line with two shots. Sierra Davis, 15 yesterday, 9 of 11 at the free throw line. She's really been the missing piece of the puzzle this year. You know, she was with this team last year, but had to sit out because of the midseason transfer rule and then also had a knee injury. And they just really reaped the benefits of her eligibility this year. She's two of four now at the line from Sierra Davis, 26-11. Struble can't get anything going offensively as Sierra Davis takes it away from her this time. Takes it all the way to the hoop. There's contact, no basket, and the charge on Sierra Davis. Didn't see who that was defensively for Carrollton, but it was a nice hustle on defense. Get position and take the basket away. And taking charges is definitely underestimated. It can be painful. Sis Maddie. Under three minutes to go now, second quarter. Morgan Van Hefty walked. That was a pretty shot. The last shot attempt was real flat. That one was obviously very good. Just looked like she wasn't quite sure if she was going to drive or pull up and shoot there. Madison Mountain. Bad pass. Dominique Davis can't make the layup. Here comes Carrollton the other way. The freshman Robinson with it. Maddie Struble forced that one. Madison Mountain down to the floor to get it. Morgan Van Hefty takes it away. Megan Foes can't handle it. This is like jungle ball. Man. Like hot potato right now. Exactly. <laughs> the clock is ticking, but it's, it's, just, and it's not going to self-destruct or anything. No, but you look around too at a lot of the Carrollton. I mean, a lot of them just look gassed right now because of the pace of this game. Well, the Anwan girls don't. Uh, you know, it's a bigger floor than what they're used to applying pressure all year too. Megan Foe says, "What big floor?" Morgan Van Hefty, her second Van basket Hefty. of the afternoon. Anawan showing no weakness here today. Sierra to her sister Dominique, but she walked. And Anawan with some unforced errors in this game. Mom and dad always said, share with your sister, share with your sister. She did. And didn't quite, quite work out that time. Minute 34 to go now, second quarter. Anawan, the controlling 28 11 lead over Carrollton. We talked about emotion and how the injury to Patsy Coonrod had really inspired the team, but coming in, you, you wondered if that was going to be enough against this kind of pressure. Well, when you play in Anawan, I mean, you, you have to almost play perfect basketball, and it starts with not turning it over. You really have to slow down the pace of the game, and even their half-court defense is so difficult because it just disrupts you all the trapping they do. Jessica Lake got the offensive rebound, but has it blocked out of bounds. Anawan did lose four times. They all came to 3A teams. Two of which, Quincy Notre Dame and Washington, still alive in the 3A Elite Eight. And a five count on Carrollton. And another turnover. 21 on the game. You know who you know who I would like to see play Anawan? I would love to see the matchup of St. Thomas Moore versus Anawan because St. Thomas Moore also a team that forces about 30 turnovers a game. Maybe you could set that up. Yeah. 
Battle of Matt, the champions. Call Matt Troja, see what he can do. One minute to go now, second quarter. Anaron tries to go inside, but Taylor Miller loses it out of bounds. It'll be Carrollton Ball trailing here by 17. Foul on Anawan will send Dominique McKenzie third. Rule to the free throw line. Three on Dominique Davis. Three, Dominique Davis, third personal. That's the thing about the Anawan full court pressure that kind of been crossing my mind here in the early going, and you see a couple of fouls in the backcourt. They really don't need to reach and foul. No. They really don't because this, I mean, over the course of the game, there's going to, I mean, 21 turnovers and 18 points off turnovers right now. And you really, and, and I'm sure they've taken some away with the reaches, but you get them on the pass and you don't have to foul. You're, you're so disruptive without having to. Right, that's just, just a thought. Kenzie Rule with the miss. And it's Anawan with the ball and a 28 12 lead. You know, if I'm Anawan, I'm holding for the last shot here. Anawan averaging 82 points per game in the postseason, only allowing 44. It's not just dominant today, it's been dominant since the first game of the region. Well, they rewrote the state record books yesterday in the semifinal win. Inside Sierra Davis off the glass with four seconds left. And time runs out on Carrollton in the first half. Sierra Davis ends the half with an exclamation point as she scores and makes it an 18-point lead for the Bravettes. Having another big game for them. Eight points, eight rebounds heading into the locker room. Both teams stream to the locker room and We'll throw it over to Matt Rodewald. He's with Jake and Jason Berkowitz. Talk about the first half, guys. Well, a lot of fouls, and other than that, really not a whole lot to complain about. The first half picked up where he left off. Yeah, uh, we just got to calm down a little bit after we come up with the turnover. I think we've been trying to speed up. Um, I don't know if we're trying to top yesterday or what, but we got to calm down and just, uh, you know, if we don't get the layup, we got to pull it out and set something up. It's one of those situations where you explain the next five minutes of the second half could be the difference of the game. Yeah, we want to come out strong. Um, you know, hopefully we can just settle down a little bit, especially when we don't get the layup. Um, we're looking for it, and we're, we'll take it when we have it. But um, a couple times we haven't had it, and we need to pull out, be more mature, and set up an offense. Okay, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thanks. Head Coach Jason Berkowitz of Anawan. They're just 16 minutes away from a state championship. Our third place and fourth place award ceremony coming up next here after the break on the IHSA Television Network. Welcome back to Redbird Arena as we finish up our halftime ceremonies for the third and fourth place winners. You see the pictures taken for Central A&M. And it's Anawan with the 30 to 12 lead here at the break. Let's take a look at some uh, halftime uh, stats and highlights here. First the highlights and it's been all Anawan as they've worked their way in. Sierra Davis working inside. They've forced 15 turnovers quite a bit early on. And from one Davis to the other, Dominique getting in the scoring column there. Been physical a little bit down there. Lots of fouls have been called in both ends. Sloppy at times, but really Anawan's had enough offense. Morgan Van Hefty, the little sister of Selena, getting her bucket there. Back the other way for Carrollton. Maddie Struble missing it there. And it's been Rachel Williams. She scored the first seven points of this one for the Lady Hawks. They've struggled ever since. It was 9-7, to seven, and now it's 30-12 to 12 with Anawan in front. Take a look at some of the stats and show you what those look like right now. It's one-sided, very much so. Three for 15. Carrollton can't really shoot the ball at this point. They've struggled to get into their offensive sets. You can see the steal differential. Very, very alarming. 18 points off those turnovers as well. And not so much happening for Carrollton. A little overmatched in that first half against Anawan. 
We'll take a break and come back. Our second half will continue with Anawan and Carrollton vying for the Class 1A state championship. We'll have the second half after this here on the IHSA Television Network. Second half start to begin here momentarily. Carrollton, long way to go to get back into this one. Down 18, head coach Brian Matson. It's a lot of turnovers there. You knew what you were facing here. How do you have to adjust now as we head into the second half? Oh, we just got to just settle down and just, just do our thing. Uh, we started doing a lot better job there towards the end of that second quarter uh, of breaking that press. Uh, we just got to keep our eyes up and look for that deep ball because they're, they're, they're gambling. They're gambling up front. Um, they do, they're doing an awesome job with that pressure defense up front. Um, we just got to settle down and just, just keep our heads up. Is it narrow-minded? Is it easy to kind of look at what's in front of you as opposed to looking ahead? Yeah, and that, that's our girls. Just, it's, it's instinct. If you see pressure, your, your, your eyes immediately go to them. Um, but I told the girls we just got to keep up, keep our eyes up, and look down floor. And um, we'll get some easy transition points if we can just see the open girl up the field. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thanks. Head Coach Brian Madsen of Carrollton. We'll take a look at the two-way bracket for tonight. Don't forget, we've got more state championship action for you this evening. We'll have the third place game between IC Catholic and Teutopolis. That will be starting at around 6.15 or so, or 6.30, I should say, is when we hit the air on the IHSA television network for many of these same stations. And then the state championship game in Class 2A, St. Thomas More, a lot like Anawan with unfinished business. They'll be back as they try and make uh, win a state championship for the first time. They're in it for two, the second straight year. And they'll be facing off against Prophetstown. Don Robinson, 37 years, his first appearance as head coach in a state championship game. That's tonight. Still got 1A to finish. We'll be back. And we are ready for second half action here at Redbird Arena in Normal, Illinois. Lee Hall, Kelly Burke, Matt Rodewald with you. All Anawan that first half. And Brian Madsen talked about keeping your eyes down the floor and finding those open players. That's easier said than done against that very unrelenting care, or, uh, Anawan pressure, I should say. Well, the good news for Carrollton is they're a patient basketball club and they just need to, to get back to that. You know, so hard to break that press when they're in your face and you're frustrated, but they did do a good job when they were able to get it across half court of having two on one situations and they just weren't able to convert in some of those situations. You know, another key for the Lady Hawks, Rachel Williams has to stay on the floor. You know, she had seven early points, but she got into foul trouble early, so she played just six minutes in the first half. Did not score in the second quarter. And then here's the half court trap. And Carrollton throws it away. Morgan Van Hefty tries to lay it up over the rim. She gets her own rebound and she's fouled and go to the line. So even when they don't score on it, they go to the line and might eventually score on it. They do a good job of following their shots. First team foul, Morgan Van Hefty at the free throw line with two shots. Morgan, of course, the younger sister of Selena. We've spoken about her mother, Val Van Hefty, the former Val Wankett, who's 17th on the IHSA all-time scoring list, 2,644 points at Atkinson High School. Went on to an outstanding college career at Bradley University. 31 to 12. We talk about bloodlines in that family, and they still have two more kids coming up through the ranks. Three more. Oh, three Morgan, more. Jade, and Drake. And of course, Dad, Ted, all he did was play football at Anawan and Division I football at Wake Forest. Sierra Davis steps through the double team, blocked from behind by Rachel Williams. She can be a force inside. But you said it a couple of times, Kelly. She's got to stay on the floor. Madison Mountain, the ill-advised three. Loose ball down on the baseline, and it will be Anawan ball. You know, we talked early on in this game just about for Anawan winning each quarter. They've certainly done that so far. You know, really staying in the present, it's easy to, to look ahead and, you know, knowing that that trophy is at stake, but they've done a great job of staying focused in this game. Megan Foes for three. 
number 53 on the year from three-point range. Oh, and a good look, but Jessica Lake couldn't finish. Well, you don't get those very often against Anawan. No. you got to convert them. Carrollton has to take advantage when they have an easy lay-in like that. Selena Van Hefty into the lane, missed. Sierra Davis follows, she can't get it to go. Selena missed the follow. And Sierra Davis touched it last, it'll be Carrollton ball. You know, we talked about in the first half, we were in the bonus really early in the first quarter. Just, just This has just been a physical game, aggressive. Both teams wanting that state championship so bad. Nice shot fake Maddie Struble, but she misses the bunny. And in their defense, I think when they get to the rim, they're so surprised maybe that there's no pressure there. You're, you're trying to rush the shot before the pressure gets there, and then you miss the easy one. Well, it looks like an easy one from the sideline anyway. You're just you're getting ahead of yourself. You're trying to do so much. You want it to go in so badly. You just you lose momentarily. You lose focus. Side to Van Hefty, Maddie Struble whistled for the foul. That's her third. Fairway foul number three, Maddie Struble, her third personal, second team foul. And Selena just so strong inside. She's such a matchup nightmare. Sierra Davis misses the three. You hear so much the point edge you know, defense wins championships. The thing about Anawan's defense is it's fun to watch. Yeah, if you're not playing against it, or you're not a fan of the team trying to play against it, Jessica Lake with her first points of the afternoon. Pass by Jessica Lake. It has been a clinic this weekend for Anawan. Anybody that wants to run a full court press defense will be taking notes here. Morgan Van Hefty, the miss. Selena Van Hefty tries again and hits the bottom side of the backboard. She'll go to the line for her efforts. Now the all-time leading scorer in Anawan history. Broke the record set by Kelly Burrish. 2,205 points earlier this year. This is the free throw. Six girls in the state of Illinois have reached 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. One of them is Selena Van Hefty. One of the other six is her mother, Val. It's all Anawan in this one. They lead it by 21. We're back at Redbird Arena, 35-14, the Anawan lead. And boy, they have... Uh, Prove the voters right as far as number one goes. Oh, absolutely. And Selena Van Hefty leading the way. This is her swan song, and she's certainly making it count. You know, we talked earlier about her being a stat cheat stuffer. Say that three times fast, Lee Hall. Well, we, we've tried to talk about it anyway. <laughs> but anyway, she has 13 points, nine rebounds, has made 10 trips to the line so far. She just does a little bit of everything. She's such a matchup nightmare for opponents. Now, I just want to go on record. I, that ball did not hit you in the head, right? I mean, I, no. I caught it. Okay. I don't know if there was a residual effect from that. <laughs> the stat sheet stuffer. <laughs> Daffy, you're channeling your inner Daffy Duck. Probably, you're probably so young. You I try to make it hard on myself. Duck. You probably don't even know who Daffy Duck is. I know who Daffy Duck is. Yeah. Well, now that we've got that settled. I'm not 30, that young. 35-14, okay. Sierra Davis makes it 38. Sierra Davis. Second team All-Stater with her first three of the afternoon. She's in double figures with 11. And just a girl that can really do it inside and out, as you saw there. Spotting up from long range, a great three-point shooter for the Brave Ends. If you were coaching a team going against Anawan, what in the world would you do to try and attack them? I mean, good luck finding a weakness, but 
Is there anything that you see or you could try to exploit? Well, I mean, offensively, it would just be, you know, I would just almost hold the ball, you know? I would r slow down the clock as much as possible. If you limit the touches they get, they can't score, you know? So if you just, if you take two or three minutes per possession, I think that's one of the few ways, you know, that you have a chance against them. Megan Foes for three. I'm frankly surprised more teams haven't tried it this year. You know, I know it's so hard though in that half court setting because they do the trapping there too. As relentless as they are in on this college 94 foot four, imagine how tough it would be on a smaller high school. I just think it would be completely overwhelming. And Hefty the follow. And it'll be Carrollton ball out of bounds. It's like you know, I mean, you know what's coming with them, but in, until you experience it firsthand, you just, you can't, you can't make it up. You can't well, have a real feel for it. And here, Brian Matson, a couple of times now, he, he said at halftime, we got to go for the deep ball. A couple of times, they've had two girls open down the floor, but you're still so geeked up by the pressure that uh, there's too much on the pass, and it's going out of bounds. It literally just, I mean, it causes you to, it wreaks havoc, causes you to panic. And Hefty will try the three, 41-14. Same score backwards and forwards. What do they call that? There's a name for that. Like names like Anna. You spell it backwards and forwards the same way. It's like balls they, they shouldn't even come up with. Somehow they do. Anna Monopia. Thank you, Brian, our director. That's a great word, too. Anna Monopia. We're bucking out the big it. vocabulary today. I can't today. spell it, but. Get out my phone and look it up for you. These are the things you talk about in a 27 point game. Pretty much. Something you wouldn't necessarily expect in a state title game, but we no. just know how dominant Anna Juan has been this entire season. I mean, winning in the postseason, there's six postseason games by an average of 36 points. Following 23, Sierra Davis is her second personal. And when you look at what they've done, and I know not necessarily that just because schools are bigger, the teams are better, but you look at some of the best teams in 3A and 2A, and they have just, I mean, it, it'd be interesting to see you talk a little bit about them playing one of the 2A teams. It'd be interesting to see a round robin with the bigger school champions and see how well Anawan will do. I think they'd be able to hold their own, certainly, if not win some games. I mean, they lost to Quincy Notre Dame. They lost to Washington. A couple of teams left in the Elite Eight in 3A. But it would certainly be a fun game to watch, I would think. Sierra Davis again. They beat Marshall by 22. Lost to Quincy Notre Dame by four. Lost to Washington by eight. Lost by two to Kankakee McNamara on a last second bucket. And lost to Rochester 50 to 36 a team that just lost in the Sweet 16. So, yeah, they've they've done a pretty good job against bigger schools. Well, they're battle tested this year, and then, of course, the experience factor has certainly served them well. I think, you know, another big difference Coach Jason Berkowitz talked about is just, you know, they're enjoying the run this year. Last year, they were just so stressed out game to game. You know, a lot of that in part because of Selena Van Hefty's ankle injury and her not being even close to 100%. You know, now with her healthy, they can just, you know, really Take in the whole process. Stay in the present Selena. and appreciate the run that they're on. Sorry, Selena with 15 now. Oh, and the good shooters get rolls like that, don't they? She's gotten that twice in this game now. Got one at the free throw line earlier today. 
bring down this arena, go Selena. I think she and her team are doing just that. A little over a minute to go now in the third quarter, and it uh, appears to be a fait accompli. Sierra Davis scores inside. And Carrollton just hasn't been able to get anything going. They had three points for all of the second quarter, just two points right now in this quarter. Pinpoint passing to Sierra Davis, and then at what point you kind of call off the dogs. You know, I would expect that Coach Berkowitz will go to his bench here in the fourth quarter pretty early. <laughs> Anna Robinson with her first bucket of the afternoon. That's only the fifth field goal of the game for Carrollton. You know, I think they've spent more time on the backcourt than even in their, in their own half of the court of the game. Jackson flings it at the buzzer, didn't get a good look. Anna on eight minutes away from that elusive state championship third a year ago. They used it as motivation as they walked up the ramp to the team bus a year ago. And they're eight minutes away from claiming that state championship. I'm almost positive. Brian Matson trying to keep his team focused. So it's, it's a tough task right now. Well, it's just it's so easy to get discouraged when you're down so big, 48 to 12. But I mean, Carrollton has to be proud of what they've been able to do in this game. You know, especially just the run they've. I mean, unranked and to, to be here playing in the state title game, they have, they have plenty to be proud of, and, and to do it without their best player, Patsy Coonrod, on the bench. You know, just a tragic injury to her right before the super sectionals. She is here sitting behind the bench. She's going to be OK long term, but uh, her basketball career season is over, possibly her career as Foes. Megan Foes hits the three, her third three of the game. She's the Bravettes best three point shooter, 50% on the day so far. Rachel Williams with her first bucket since the first quarter. And Rachel Williams with nearly all of the Lady Hawks points today. The lowest point total allowed by Anawan this season. They allowed 26 a couple of times. Galva and Orion held the 26. They missed their 29 wins this season, going for win number 30 here today. And uh, could end up with a season best defensively as well. You, know, and you have to think the Bravettes have to be one of the, have put on one of the best defensive performances in state history. You know, yesterday they broke. Uh, the state record for steals in a game, 35 steals in 32 minutes. That, that broke the record for all classes, which is really saying something. And then also broke the field goal attempts record for 1A with 62 and the largest margin of victory, 26 points in that 1A semifinal win. Threes on the year coming into today's action. Paige Randall with the block, but got a lot of arm there, too. And It'll be free throws for Mackenzie Rule. And on foul number 12, Paige Randall is her second personal, third team foul. Mackenzie Rule with the free throw line with two shots. One. 
Mackenzie Rule, two of three, made two of her last three, rather, yesterday in the final 40 seconds to seal the Carrollton win in the semifinals. And she was the girl that was inserted into the starting lineup at point guard because of Coonrod's absence. Rachel Williams, the rebounder. Honorable mention All-Stater. Banana one calling off the press now, so finally Carroll's and getting a chance to get into rhythm with their offense. And a battle there as Madison Mountain and Megan Foes go for the ball. And get up and pat each other on the back. We talked about the physical nature of this game. It's we're still seeing the effects here in the fourth quarter. I know Augusta Southeastern only scored 20 against Carrollton in the 0-2 championship. That is uh, the oh, lowest oh. that we found in a championship game. Now well, there's one. Rich Woods from Peoria beat Freeport 56 to 19. So 19 appears to be the lowest total in a state championship game. That was in 3A in 2009. This would be the lowest in 1A history that dates back to 2008. Carrollton, Carrollton Augusta Southeastern game was a Class A game in 2002. Of course, we saw Carrollton, back-to-back -back years back in the early 2000s. Well, you know, one is really switched up their offense this year, kind of going four out, one girl in, and Selena Van Hefty, and they just feel like that's really opened things up for the rest of their team. Guard play, especially, you know, Megan Foes being one of the benefactors of that. Van Hefty had an open shot, shares the basketball. Gives to Paige Randall inside, and she's fouled. And that's one of the things that Jason Berkowitz said. What, you know, when you've got an All-Stater, what did she do to improve her game in the last year? What's she better at? And that's one thing he talked. He, he talked a lot about post-to-post -post passing and passing out of the double team. But that was a nice drop-down pass, high post to low post. Mm -hmm. yeah, Lena certainly is. Improved her interior passing game. Doesn't have many weaknesses in her game. That was maybe a weak, one of her small weaknesses last year and just really done a good job of making herself completely well-rounded. Dominique Davis comes out to applause on the Anawan sideline. Selena Van Hefty, one more rebound, one more bucket for her. She's got 19. Selena Van Hefty. And it's a 40-point Anawan lead. Selena now with 19 points, 13 rebounds, at least 11 double-doubles on the year. We don't get all the stat work, but we know she had at least that many. Maddie Struble with her first basket of this game after scoring 19 yesterday. She just she hasn't gone to the ball. She hasn't seen the ball much in this game. You know, only six field goal makes in this game overall. Rachel Williams comes up with the rebound there for Carrollton. Long three attempt by Madison Mountain is off the mark. First sectional title in nine years, so uh, quite a bit for Brian Madsen and uh, the Carrollton folks to be proud of coming this far with an unranked team. And just all the adversity they've overcome and the resiliency they've had, especially here in these last couple of weeks. It's so impressive. And you have to take, really, you have to take any poll with a, a grain of salt, but especially at the high school level, because the voting, I mean, it, it's well-intentioned, but a lot of the voters don't see a lot of the team, so you go based on record and who they beat and those kind of things. So you can't measure heart, though, and Carrollton's shown a lot of that, and... The Anawan fans on their feet as the starters get their send-off here with 2.26 left.
It's our Carrollton move of the game. Compliments of Realtor.com. Take your home search mobile with Realtor.com. Boy, pretty emotional over there on that Anawan sideline as the seniors came off. Let's go to Matt Rodewald. Well, guys, we go from championship Saturday to celebration Sunday, and these guys are going to be celebrating tomorrow over at the high school. They'll be celebrating at Anawan High School Gymnasium. So for everyone watching in Kiwani at the Wani Theater, they loaded up the theater to watch these last two days. They'll be celebrating tomorrow Sunday at 3 o'clock. It looks like there'll be a, cha a state championship trophy in the house. As for Carrollton, they're definitely going to celebrate as well. So everyone, if you're watching back in Carrollton, especially those at the Wagon Wheel Restaurant, 4 o'clock Sunday at the Carrollton High School Gym. Guys, always wanted to be in the movies, and there we are on the big screen. Hi, everybody, the Wani Theater. I know you're enjoying this one. It's pretty incredible, just what the Ron Anna Wan has made these past couple of years. You know, the most accomplished in the history of Anna Wan sports these past two seasons, a 60 and five record. And a whole new Five some out there for Anna Juan. Rachel Peterson. There's Kayla Dunphy with the rebound. Well, the Robinson sisters were a pretty good basketball playing group for Anna Juan. Friends of ours, a couple of them in coaching. Those ladies were pretty strong back in their day, but the state championship here for Anna Juan. Just a few moments away, their second trip to state, second straight trip to state. You know, I think the, the difference this year is just, you know, how satisfying is this for them? Just to experience both ends of the spectrum. You know, I think it makes it that much sweeter for them, just the fact that they went through what they did last year. They came so close to getting to the title game, you know, losing by two to Aquin, and then, you know, took home the third place trophy, but ever since, that day I've just been dead set on getting back here. It's a heck of a thing. Every team in the state has that goal, but to really follow through on it and to make it happen. It's a sight to see, and it's been a completely dominating performance by Anna Juan, and it wasn't a fluke. Yesterday wasn't a fluke uh, by any stretch, but that was that was probably the best game they played all year. I mean, when you talk 47 turnovers, 44 points off turnovers, and to play your best game on this stage uh, says a lot for Jason Berkowitz and the girls and the, and the work they put forth from the day they walked up the tunnel here and, and went back home heartbroken to Anawan a year ago. Well, they clearly were leaving nothing to chance. They were emphatically making sure that they were punching their ticket to the state title game and doing it in dominant fashion. Final minute of the state championship game. And the Anawan fans sense that celebration. And here's our move of the game for Anawan. Who else? Selena Van Hefty. It's compliments of Realtor.com, the most accurate real estate experience. Selena bringing down this arena with 19 points and 13 boards. Emily Struble, the freshman with the bucket. Seconds away from celebration at Redbird Arena. Heartbreak a year ago to state champions in 2014, the Anawan Bravettes win their 30th in impressive fashion and go home state champions this year. I tell you, I feel for the Eastland girls and the Carrollton girls trying to go up against that. This is kind of a juggernaut. I mean, one of the best performances at state, back to back, 
uh, just dominant performances we've ever seen. Yeah, just just incredible the run that they have made this year, you know, and, and to do it so consistently and to do it on this type of stage is just so impressive. All right, let's go to Matt Rodewald. He's with one of the state champion Bravettes. Well, Selena Van Hefty came here a year ago basically on one leg. Now you're a state champ. How does it feel? Oh, my God. Words cannot describe how happy I am right now. I'm so proud of my team. Oh, my God. This is just so amazing right now. It had to be frustrating leaving here a year ago, and it, it served as motivation very nicely for you heading into this season. It certainly did. I uh, made it my goal to stay healthy, and now we won state. I'm so excited right now. On top of that, you forced 80 turnovers this weekend. That's incredible. I know. I, I All to our guards right now, that's amazing for them. I'm so proud of them. I'm so blessed to be on this team. It's just amazing right now. Congratulations to you. We'll let you go celebrate. Thank Guys. Boy, Matt put that into perspective, didn't he? 80 turnovers total. 47 <laughs> last yesterday and 33 here today. Just mind-boggling. Well, that's and that's 77 points off turnovers in two games. Yeah, it's just incredible. I mean, you know, you you think so much when you hear Anawan, you know, girls like Selena Selena Van Hefty and Sierra Davis, and you think they're offense, but it's really just their defense that just really gets you and stays with you. Just what they've been able to do on that end of the floor. And on the Carrollton side of things, well, they love their Hawks and their Lady Hawks in Carrollton, and this is a team that they will remember for a long time. They didn't bring home a state championship like they did in 01 and 02, but as far as heart and guts and competitiveness, to bring it here, I mean, with what they've been through this year, a brand new coach, uh, they get to super sectional and don't get to play their best player because she's injured. And to take it to the state championship game, regardless of what the scoreboard says here, these girls and this team are gonna be remembered for a long time down in Southwestern Illinois. Well, the Lady Hawks clearly a bunch of fighters, and you know, just the experience and all the adversity they faced this year, and the resiliency they've showed, just lessons that'll really stay with them later in life. There's just a certain maturity about this club, you know, and you know, you know that Patsy Coonrod, even though she's upset she wasn't be able to wasn't able to be out there on the floor, is just so proud of her girls. Absolutely, and she is standing with her teammates, and I'm guessing she's going to go get a medal, and this place will erupt when that happens. It's just incredible that she, you know, made the trip today even. You talk about determination. Great basketball history in Carrollton. Mia Smith, who's now the head coach at Illinois Wesleyan University, across town in Bloomington. As you get a look at Brian Madsen getting his medal. She brought the team to state in 1992. Then it was Lori Blade in 96 and 98. One and done those years. Second place in 99. And then the back-to-back -back state champs in 2001 and 2002. Made it to state in 2004 and didn't place. And this year they're second in state. So that's... And it just makes They're you part of an elite crowd in Carroll. Certainly, it just you know it makes you wonder too. I mean, Brian Madsen, his first year. What is he going to be able to accomplish? You know, with some time with these girls in this group. Well, he gives a lot of credit to the girls for seniors returning this year, for starters returning, and he stepped in and uh, tough situation, and the girls adjusted, and he says they did whatever we asked. And it earned them a second place state trophy and medals here today. And that's the great thing about the state tournament. You just, there's a reason you play the game. You just never know. You mentioned the state rankings and, you know, that they're just that, their rankings um, and, and people's opinions that, you know, maybe you haven't seen a lot of these teams play, but Carrollton certainly showing that they belong. After a nine year absence, from the sectional title game, or at least winning a sectional title, it won the, for the first time in nine years. Kind of a return to glory this year for Carrollton. Something to build on, and this is the kind of thing, as you know, small communities, when they have success, it builds and builds, and you know, the little girls that are in grade school, uh, they want to come up and do what the girls in high school are doing now. 
Yeah, you, it's just so neat to see the, the community support they get. And, you know, a majority of the town right behind us here. And here she is, Patsy Coonrod. She's not going to go up on the podium, but she's going to get her medal. And not a dry eye in the house right uh, now. That's pretty neat. The important thing is she's here. And she's going to be okay. And walking, yeah, walking under her own power and going to be okay in the long term. You know, and just a reminder that, you know, in a split second, life can just Absolutely. change. She's lucky to have that family of girls right there with her. And what a job they've done this week, and what a job this team has done all year. Anawan finishes 30 and 4, did not lose to a 1A team this year. Jason Berkowitz, third a year ago, brings his team back to state and takes home a state title. Motivation can be such a strong thing. You know, clearly these girls put in the hard work to get back here. And I think it's safe to say this team really enjoying the run. team really lucky I think Jason Berkowitz made it to state as a player you know to have him there to have Morgan and Selena's mom Val Van Hefty who played at a high level in high school and college to, to let the girls know what it takes to compete at this level Just a heady group of girls. They, they get the X's and O's part of it, but they get the process. You know, what it takes to get to a stage like this. You know, and how committed you have to be. And how many times do you see it where a team makes it to a championship game or close to a championship game, falls short, and then the next year, thanks in part to that experience, they come back stronger and win a championship the following. You know, we talked about the resilience of Carrollton, but Anawan, a resilient group as well, used, you know, a negative experience from State last year, something happening to them, and turned it into a positive. And we're going to bow out here for a second because you can hear a big roar now. Time leading scorer in school history, Selena Van Hefty, and also a state champion. You know, and so dominated, or so dominant rather, and, and decorated. But you know, for Selena, all of those awards and accomplishments mean nothing. She wants to be remembered more than anything for the biggest team accomplishment, and that is as a state champion. I think she might be sleeping with that trophy tonight. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, she, someday she'll look at her children like that. I think that's the amount of love I saw in her eyes there. Wow. Uh -oh. Now they're going to get real. I'm not sure what song this is, but <laughs> can you help me out? <laughs> All right. We are gonna go to break, we'll be back. No, we won't be back. Will we be back, Brian, or will we not be? We're not back, okay. We've got two A-State basketball coming your way tonight. Congratulations to 
the Carrollton Lady Hawks for their second place finish this season. Congratulations to Anawan for a state championship. And we've got another state championship to be decided here tonight. It all tips off at 6.30. And you can see it all right here on the home for America's original March Madness, the IHSA TV Network. Be back with you next weekend from normal and two more weekends of boys action too, but it all continues tonight right here at 6.30. For Kelly Burke, Matt Rodewald, and our entire crew, so long from Redbird Arena in Normal.